The founders of Port Townsend thought that it would be Seattle, but in fact, uh, in 1893, when there was a nationwide depression and the railroad did not come to Port Townsend, many people left the town and it sort of just settled into becoming a time capsule of Victorian architecture. We are on the eve of greater prosperity than ever before. And if our citizens offer every encouragement, we will have a population of 12,000 from this writing. The Morning Leader, 1889. I think a lot of people felt this was an economic utopia. Water Street. Beyond the wooden brick storefronts, half a dozen ships lay at anchor in the bay. On shore, their crews stride the wooden sidewalks in search of a bar or brothel, both easily found. The sailors rub shoulders with soldiers from Fort Warden. Indians selling smoked salmon, Italian greengrocers hawking fresh fruit, and Chinese merchants clad in silk blouses, black slippers, and pigtails. The air is a pungent mix of sweet perfume, cheap whiskey, exotic spices, horse sweat, and perhaps a hint of opium. The town, with her rich dot of timber and her beautiful harbor, was voted Miss Pacific Northwest and became betrothed to a large railroad. Her happy founders immediately got busy and whipped up a trousseau of three- and four-story brick buildings, a huge and elaborate redstone courthouse, and sites and plans for enough industries to start her on a brilliant career. In the ensuing panic of 1893, her railroad lover dropped her like a hot potato. Poor little town never recovered from the blow. Betty McDonald. The great thing about Port Townsend is that all of our major civic buildings still serve their original purpose. The county courthouse, the city hall, the customs house, and even our Carnegie Library. They still serve the citizens of Port Townsend as they did originally back in the uh, 1890s. Fort Townsend seems to be well selected for a military post. It has a first-rate spring of pure water and is well supplied with timber for miles. Colonel Joseph K.F. Mansfield, 1858. The military came into Jefferson County in 1897. That brought jobs and personnel into the community and kept the economy alive at certain points. Jefferson County, to me, exemplified the best of possible communities. It's attracted just a range of people with, with different dreams, different goals. On the one hand, you have the United States Army protecting our freedoms. On the other hand, you have artists exploring those freedoms. The feel of the community is exceptional. The sense of community is absolutely real. I'm sitting in the historic city council chamber in Port Townsend. And this is the oldest continuously used city council chamber in the state of Washington. This building was finished in 1892, started in 1891, but finished in 1892, and ever since, city council has met in this room. The Jefferson County Museum has been located on the ground floor of Port Townsend City Hall since 1951. So we like to say that downstairs is where we learn about our past, and upstairs in the city council chamber is where we plan our future. Coming out of the counterculture of the 60s, a lot of people moved to Port Townsend because it was a town that was just waking up. Many of them were artists and writers and musicians. There's just a spirit here. There's just a feeling in the air. But at the same time, there's also a lot of cultural connections to the outside world. I mean, we have nice art, amazing musicians incredible world-class craft with the shipwrights. There's something going on here that helps people be really self-actualized. There is a spirit, a connectedness that's quite different from any place I've experienced. So we are a very authentic Victorian town. In fact, a group of travel writers selected Port Townsend as one of the most authentic tourist destinations in the world.